I know how to talk to her, especially to her. This line is part of a conversation that occurs in the apartment of Henry's mistress, Janice. It's a conversation that I would not think twice about. But this is the only hint in the movie, Goodfellas, about a particular event that may have helped tip the scales against real-life mob associate Thomas, Two Guns Desimone. We all know Tommy did it. It's pretty obvious in the movie. I'm talking about the murder of Billy Bats. With the help of Jimmy Conway, Tommy DeVito killed Billy Bats. The murder is from a scene in Goodfellas, the unforgettable 1990 mafia movie by Martin Scorsese, and based on Nicholas Pileggi's book, Wise Guy, an account of the real lives of mob associates from the Lucchese crime family back in the 70s and 80s. The cast features Joe Pesci as Tommy DeVito, Robert De Niro as Jimmy Conway, Paul Sorvino as their boss, Polly Cicero, with Ray Liotta as Henry Hill, and Lorraine Bracco as his wife, Karen. The murder takes place the night of Billy's welcome home party at Henry's joint. Billy, surrounded by his friends, insults Tommy DeVito. Tommy flies into a rage, but is escorted out of the lounge. When Billy goes missing, it's easy to come to conclude that his murder would be pinned on Tommy. Why? Billy's friends witness the confrontation between the two, and as Tommy walks back into the lounge later that night, two club patrons pass him on their way out. So, based on the movie, it would be pretty easy to blame Tommy for the murder. But in truth, is it really that obvious? In the movie, Billy wasn't afraid of Tommy, even with Tommy in full rage mode. Billy knows he was untouchable. Because Billy was a made guy, it's easy to believe that none of them saw Tommy as a threat. So, when Billy goes missing, it is believable that Billy's friends wouldn't have suspected Tommy. This is supported later in the movie when Polly asks Henry if he knows anything about Bat's murder, because he says Billy's crew has been busting his balls about it. So if no one from Billy's crew had any idea that Tommy killed their man, then someone must have ratted him out. Who was the snitch? Well, in real life, the snitch was Polly, and in Goodfellas, subtle hints are scattered all throughout, pointing to the real-life snitch. Let me take you through it. Starting with what I consider the most difficult hint to pick up on, the affair between Polly and Karen. The marriage between Karen and Henry was falling apart. He stays at his mistress Janice's apartment for weeks, refusing to go back home to his wife. Polly and Jimmy drop by the apartment. Polly tells Henry that Karen came to him. They tell Henry he's got to go back to his wife. Polly points out that they are not animals here, so divorce is out of the question, and that it is important to keep up appearances. This is when Polly tells Henry that he knows exactly how to talk to Henry's wife. What Polly is explaining here are the mafia rules. In the mob, you are not to disrespect the wife or girl of another mobster. So we know that Karen confided in Polly. Well, that's not all this scene is about. The entire conversation seems so inconsequential at first until you realize exactly what Polly is saying. This scene hints at Polly's interest in taking care of Karen personally. While he sends Henry off to Florida with Jimmy, in reality, Paul was having an affair with Karen while Henry was in prison. You have to wonder what else Karen could have confided in Paul. In Goodfellas, the only significant thing Karen witnessed was seeing Henry hosing down the trunk of his car. She complains about the stench. Yeah, and so what if they are having an affair? Well, remember Karen's account of the other mafia wives? It was at Mickey's hostess party. One wife claimed that her husband would kill any man who got frisky with her. What is not shown in the movie is that during Paul's real-life affair with Karen, Tommy attempted to rape her. And if there's one thing the movie makes very clear about gangsters, it's that they'll kill you for hurting their girl, which is exactly what Henry threatens to do to Karen's neighbor in the movie, after beating him bloody. Even if Karen didn't tell Polly anything significant, Tommy himself could have slipped up. In Goodfellas, Henry complains to Tommy and says, You and your fucking mouth, as they sit in their car, forgetting about getting away from the fire. Then there's Tommy telling everyone that digging a hole to hide Spider's body won't be the first time he's done it. He goes on and on about how it isn't the first time. I think this refers to an unsanctioned murder committed by the real-life Tommy 
of Foxy Girote, a good friend of John Gotti. So not only has Tommy assaulted a mobster's wife, but he may have also killed a friend of another mob boss. To be fair, Tommy's rambling on about having buried a body before is barely proof that he broke another mafia rule. Then let's go back to Billy Batts. Remember the night of the party? We know that Batts was a button man. Tommy accuses Billy of being a fake tough guy who simply bought his button. Later, as the lounge empties out, we see Billy talking business to Jimmy, explaining how he's got mouths to feed. In real life, Batts was part of the Gambino crime family and was another close friend of John Gotti. All this is relevant because, as I have mentioned before, you can't kill a made man. He's untouchable without the green light from his boss, which is what Polly must have given Gotti as a retribution for the unsanctioned murders of Gotti's friends. When Tommy gets whacked, Jimmy is told over the phone that there was nothing anyone could do about it. Henry describes this as real greaseball shit, something he and Jimmy just had to accept. This is exactly what Henry was worried about. The look on his face when all Tommy thought about was getting blood on his floor. I mean, the guy just killed a Gambino button man. Tommy was simply out of control. He wasn't just reckless. He was a hothead too. A real pain in the ass. And apparently, Polly saw this as a liability. And in real life, it was another good reason to eliminate him. This must have been what real life Paul thought when Tommy slipped up during the Lufthansa heist in 1978. According to eyewitness accounts, Tommy took his ski mask off in front of hostages. It posed a risk for Jimmy, whom Polly valued as a good earner. The movie doesn't show the actual heist and Tommy's mistake, but it does give us hints about Tommy's bad attitude. At Polly's house, Henry is given some advice. Most important is not to deal drugs. Then Polly tells Henry to watch out for Jimmy, that he's a good earner, but he takes too many chances. And also, that Tommy is a good kid, but that he's crazy. A cowboy who's got too much to prove. Polly says he's given everyone a warning. In the mob, a warning isn't always spoken. Henry explains that a warning is when one of your friends gets whacked. There's another conversation Polly has, one with the restaurant owner, Sonny, wherein Tommy is described as a bad seed. Tommy has refused to pay his tab and roughs Sonny up, so Sonny has a sit down with Polly to air his grievance. Scared for his life, Sonny complains that he might have to go on the lam. In fact, he fears he's going to wind up missing, that they're going to find him in the back of a car somewhere in the weeds. Exasperated with Sonny's endless complaining, Polly finally says to him, I'd like to help you out. Now look, what do you want from me? What am I going to do? Tommy's a bad kid. He's a bad seed. What am I supposed to do? Shoot him? The conversation comes to a sudden stop when Sonny replies, Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. 